everyone, and welcome back to Miss Azrael's Gaming. Today we're going to get back into ambitions. Um, so if you remember from the last video, we had just went to that, uh, like, I don't know, ball or noble get together, whatever if you want to call it that. And we basically just got the crap ringed out of us because of who our fiance is, which we still haven't met him yet. And he's the whole reason we're here in Paris. And I kind of just get the feeling that he might not be who he says he is. Uh, yeah, so I mean, let's just uh, get back into it and see where the story is going to go. So you awaken the next morning in bed and uh, that still feels unfamiliar. In the process of waking up, you start to recall last night's humiliations and wish that they were merely the, pr the product of your fitful dreams. Unable to go back to sleep, you spend some time tossing and turning in bed before finally sitting up. Okay, so nothing is going to make nothing is going to make last night go away. The only option is to decide what to do next. You feel exhausted, not physically, but in your very soul, like your fate in Paris has already been decided and that to remain here would be pointless. It would just be the humiliations of last night, over and over again. However, stronger than that exhaustion is the simmering rage you feel, at the outrageousness of your circumstances, at the injustice of your treatment, and at the thought of going back to your tiny village after finally making it here in Paris. No, you must not go back. You cannot go back. Not while a single candle of your ambition still burns. Camilla pops into your room, already dressed and ready for the day. Bonjour, madame, she beams. It looks like you had quite an active night. Is there anything I can get you? You should please find me a spare pillow and smother me. <laughs> I'm not sure. Do you know how to make a murder look like an accident? <sighs> Some kind of refreshment, please. Uh, let's go with that one. Certainly, madame. What can I get you? Camille asked with a smile. Tea, please. I'll need to keep my wits about me uh, if I'm to regain people's trust. I'll have some wine. Numbing the memory of last night will make me less anxious. Let's go with tea. Camilla returns so quickly with the tea that you're certain she made it ahead of time. It's piping hot, fragrant, and not too bitter. You drink the blue in silence, the gears of your mind slowly getting up to speed. The tiredness fades. Your anger does not. You've gained a little credibility. Oh, good. We got it back up to five. You take a few moments to finish your drink in silence and collect your thoughts. Something that keeps coming to mind is all the gossip you've heard during your time at the party. Most of it was idle prattle, but some of it felt scandalous and valuable. Without an inherent inheritance or a job, you'll need a way to make some money. Maybe someone would be willing to buy this gossip. Is that a thing people do? Camilla taps her chin thoughtfully. Well, when I was at Les Halles the other day, someone mentioned something about a newspaper with these amazing society pages. I think it was called Le Trompette du... Uh, what would that be? Pupel? People? Pe pe <laughs> people? I don't know. I don't speak French, so... Uh, so that is now available to visit in Paris Map. They'd have to get their stories from somewhere. Why not you? In fact, I bet you'd be great at that, madame. Okay, so Merci Camille. I think I'll do just that. I've been baroness to be to gossip monger. Great, just great. Okay, so mercy, Camille. I think I'll do just that. With that, your day begins. Okay, so we're going to explore Paris. Okay, that's the dress shop. Okay, so there's that's the place here. So a small shop run by the dressmaker Fatima. Oh, I didn't. Did I click on that? Oh, that's the one I want. Okay. A popular and scrupulous newspaper spend the day here to sell gossip, manipulate public opinion, and update your knowledge of political fractions in Paris. Okay, so let's go ahead and go there. You walk through the city, following Camille's directions. Eventually, you find yourself threading through narrow and narrow streets. The alleys packed with refuse and the occasional uh, vagrant napping in the shade feels almost oppressive in their closeness. Suddenly, the alleys open up into a wider street near the square. You can hear the splashing of a fountain nearby. You finally find the sign of... Uh, Le Trompette du Papule. The paint appears to be fresh, but the office seems awfully small. The door is locked, so you give it a knock. Nobody answers. Looking around, you find a hastily written note lodged in the doorframe. It reads, Office temporarily closed. Engaging in emergency fundraising efforts. We apologize for the convenience management. P.S. Fear not the setback. The light of journalism shall never fade. It's at that moment that you realize the splashing of the fountain is getting louder, accompanied by some of the most inventive profanity you've ever heard. Against your better judgment, you decide to investigate. Ah, a reedy voice shouts triumphantly. You come upon a man in grubby finery up to his knees in the fountain. His shoes are carefully been placed at the water's edge. He does a little jig as he drops white coin into a snuff box, which he clutches tightly in his other hand. Noticing your presence, the man in the fountain turns to you with a nod and a smile that attempts to be at ingrating. Bonjour, madame. 
Are you Pierre, the steamed editor of Le Trompette du Peuple? Are you serious? This is your fundraising? Mm-hmm. His smile broadens and the man bows. His manner suddenly as elegant as the finest courtiers of uh, Versailles. Why, in fact, I am Bon Dame. My name is Pierre uh, Renaud. Renaud. How may I be of service? I have some valuable social information for sale. No tutorial. Okay, so if I wanted to sell some gossip, how would that work? Uh-huh. So let's do tutorial. A devious smile crosses his face. New to this, are you? Don't worry, it's much easier than you think. Okay, so this list shows all the pieces of gossip that you have at the moment. Click on one of them. Okay, gossip value is determined by the tier and its freshness, but it also has an effect. If you peddle influence, I'll take the gossip for free, but you can use that effect to change the standing of the faction. However, right, you need... Uh, However, right now you need money, so click on the sell gossip button. Are you sure, madame? Okay, so we get uh, 30, um, 30 money. So you do this. I think it's, it's a francs. It might be francs. Chance. Uh, there should be no chance of the public finding out. Okay. There should be a 1 in 20 chance of the public finding out. Let's just go ahead and sell it. Okay. I'm go home. So it's March 24th, 1789. You wake up the next morning to a polite knock on your bedroom's door frame. Camilla enters, carrying a small armload of letters. Uh, Madame, Camilla starts, both confused and hesitant. There's a, letter, a lot of letters for you here. Are they for me or are they for Armand? Take a letter. So it says, mm-hmm. They're for you, madame. Every single one, Camilla beams. Are these party invitations? Why would anyone invite me to a party? Oh, great. More chances to be humiliated by someone I don't even know. Let's try to be positive. Uh-huh. Well, madame, you are a little f- uh, famous right now, Camilla replies. Everyone's heard about your run-in with the dreadful party host a few days ago. How they preyed upon your honor and spirited away your carriage driver, leaving you trapped and alone. You don't think that's exactly how it happened, but decide against fretting over the details. Camilla starts to talk faster and faster. Then, when all was lost, you were saved by a beautiful stranger who escorted you home in the moonlight. It's so romantic, no? Oh, the rumors are already running rampant. Why, just in the market the other day, I heard someone say that they've that you've taken a liking to. Camilla stops staring into space and blushes. Actually, never mind. Never mind what? Let's say never mind, never mind it again. Never mind what? Hmm. It's just rumors from the marketplace, madame. Nothing you should dignify. In any case, this is your chance to meet people in the city who don't hate you, or Monsieur Armand. You've received many party invitations, and you can now uh, receive party invitations from all over Paris. In fact, I'm sure that anyone who really judges you fairly is going to love you. So, Merci, Camille. I really hope that's true. Okay, that's all well and good, but how does any of this work? So, let's go to the tutorial. Don't worry, madame. It's quite simple. Okay, so you've been invited to several parties. Camilla will show you your new invitations as you receive them. Choose accept or decline to decline which parties, um, decide which parties you'll attend. Or choose close to skip and close, choose later. Parties take up your whole day, but you f- can find gossip and advance certain stories there. So the request uh, attendance of Madame Yvette de Croix to his choir recital on the 26th of Mars, 1789. The intim- intimate party should be very heightful, height of cheerful gaiety. Okay, so the tending this party will give you a level of exhaustion. Accepting today will reward you five credibility. Ignoring this invitation will cost you five. You receive church gossip at the party. Let's go ahead and accept it. Okay, so um, request attendance of Madame Yvette de Cour to her wine tasting on the 29th of Mars, 1789. This intimate party is sure to be very height of merriment. Attending this party will give you a level of exhaustion. Accepting today will reward you five. Ignoring it, you get minus five. You receive bourgeoisie gossip at this party. Can I accept more than one? This isn't like the same day, is it? Let's just accept it. Oh, no. These must be at the same time. Yep. Okay, so we can either go to request the attendance of the fascinating Madame Yvette de Croix and and to his opera gala on the 3rd of 1789. This intimate party is sure to be a most spectacular display of generous amusement. Um, Attending the party of his auction, get credibility, receive crown gossip. 
Uh, let's see. Madame Bailey requests attendance of the infamous Madame Yvette de Croix to her po poetry salon. This intimate party is sure to be the purest form of effervescent celebration. Okay, so credibility fire. So, so you will receive revolutionary gossip. Okay. Um, I'm going to accept the opera and decline that one. Okay, request the attendance of Madame Yvette. The crow to his military ball on the fifth. Sentiment party is sure to be fried to marry it. Okay, so the same thing. So we'll go ahead and accept that one. Plus, it boosts my credibility. Okay, so you can select an, any invitation on the calendar to see more details about it. Deciding to attend a party the same day that you receive an invitation gives you a small bonus of credibility. Okay, so we don't have this one for two days because we're going to need an outfit probably. Oh, a Hessian doorman. Fabric shortage. The maid and the archer. The royal palace. And Jardin de... I can't read that, it's so small. Okay, so we don't have any current objectives right now. So there's incidents. Well, we've got two days, so let's check out one of these incidents. Let's do the Hessian. Exploring a more dangerous part of the city carries some risk, but some of the violent types you might meet could be useful or even employable. Interesting. Uh, but it's going to cost me money to hire a bodyguard. Due to recent fabric shortages, it appears that a certain dressmaker you know might be in need of a favor. A favor that requires a little guile. Okay, it might be good to help the seamstress. The main archer are walking near the market. You come across your own maid of, of all work, who seems to be in a bit of trouble. Oh, but I would like to help my maid, too. Relax the promenade. With your liaison in this rendezvous location, the popular garden's ideal place to unwind and engage in that little people watching. Ooh, that's tough. I'm going to go here, though. Hopefully it doesn't cost me any money. I don't have 100, so I can't, I can't pay for anything, so... The streets of Paris are more crowded than usual. You find yourself actively ca contending for space in the streets amongst all the hustle and bustle. Nothing about this day feels particularly special, and you wonder what brought all these people out. You feel a finger tapping you on the shoulder. You turn around and find yourself face to face with none other than the dressmaker, Fatima. Ah. Salut, Evette. It's always nice to see one of my favorite customers outside my little shop. After a pause, she sighs and said, Is it possible for you to do me a favor? Holding up a pouch of coins and pointing at a storefront, she says, Can you take this money, go into the dressmaker shop, and buy something for me? You see, I used to work there for around uh, five years or so, but I never got promoted. Ideally, she rubs her fingers across her Hamsa necklace. So I left just at my own place, and the owner wasn't very happy about it. The next words are mumbled. I might have told her the only client she was fit to dress were the devil and the hangman. Either way, I need some spare fabric, and I'm not welcome to any shop anymore. Oh, in that shop anymore. Of course I will help. What do you need? I don't know about this. Are you sure? Why give them the money at all then? Can't you get the fabric elsewhere? Okay, so I'll tell her I'll uh -huh. help her. Well, thank you so much. She says, thrusting the pouch of uh, livres into your hand and detailing about what exactly she needs. Okay, so you've gained credibility and you've gained the 100 livres. Inside, you are cheerily greeted by a woman at the counter. Bonjour, madame, and welcome to our humble establishment. The statement downplays the reality that this place isn't humble at all. In fact, it's utterly magnificent. You also get the feeling that there's nothing here you can afford outside of the bolts of raw fabric you've been sent here to purchase. Is there anything I can help you with? Yes, I'm looking for a few bolts of fine fabric. Can you help me? Your co-worker told me I can acquire spare fabric here quite affordably. Is that true? Ooh, I don't know. Can I... I don't know if I got enough credibility. Hmm. I mean, I might be able to keep the money if I do that. Alistair. Huh. You do self team is ordered to the saleswoman continue to play up the imaginary discount that you were promised by an equally imaginary coworker of hers. She really said that, the saleswoman says, looking behind the counter, looking for some kind of note to that effect. <sighs> After finding nothing behind her desk, she squints accusingly at you. Nice try, but were you a little more careful than that? Nice try, but were a but were a little more careful than that. The dick bag, no cigars. It's a hundred flat. You lost some credibility. Damn it. 
Still, you make the payment, and she suddenly wraps up your order. You paid the hundred lira. Order in hand, you step outside with an armload of high-quality fabrics. Oh, thank you so much. This is exactly what I needed. Eh, my credibility went up by five, so I technically only lost five. You've gained a little credibility. The two of you make small talk before you part ways. She has lots of work to do, and you decide to explore the city a little more before heading home. See, I should have just been truthful. So we're on the 25th. The next morning, you wake up from a long night's rest, feeling pretty much the same as you did last night. Now that you think about it, you've been feeling tired since that terrible party a few nights ago. Camilla enters the room carrying some breakfast. Bonjour, madame. You look unwell. I say spotted Camilla. I also feel unwell. Nonsense, I'm fine. It's a little rude to just say it out loud, but you're right. Nicely spotted. Well, don't worry. This sort of thing happens to Monsieur Armand all the time. He would attend all these parties and then forget that sometimes he needed to rest. Armand was always the sort of person who'd burn the candle at both ends. In fact, you were, you were both often guilty of this, which is one of the reasons the two of you got along so well together. The more parties he attended, the more exhausted he was, which made, him, which made things harder and harder for him. Remember, madame, instead of spending the day outside, you can always rest at home for a day to recover your strength. There's nothing wrong with taking a break every now and then. Home is now available on the Paris map. Do you think you'll be staying in tonight, madam? Okay, I'm going to say not tonight because I need to go get a dress. If you insist, madam, Camilla replies with some hesitance, but you brush it off and continue with your day. I mean, surely I can't get that tired going and buying an outfit. Rumors, the Hessian, getting made in the archer. So we're going to go to the tailor. Maybe she'll give me a discount because I helped her. You arrive at Lapit Mongol to find Fatima already engaged with someone else. Mm. Please, Maurice, you have to understand, this place barely has two spare coins to rub together right now, and I only have a few regular customers left. I simply don't have enough work to hire on extra help. I'm sure. sorry. I understand, Fatima. I'm just been It's just been months without work. I'm starting to think that I'll have to leave town if I can't find something soon. The man sighs and shakes his head. Please just tell me that you haven't found someone better. What? You know that's impossible. I've never met a man with more uh, precise stitching than you. <laughs> oh, Fatima, you flatter him. Please stop, he laughs. Actually, no, please keep going. Fine, I may be great at making garments, but you turn them into second skin. Anything you work on gets new life breathed into it. It's how you say, uh, fashion goes and goes, but well-fitting clothes never go out of style. That's the one. <gasps> oh, Madame de Croix, you're here. Fatima yelps, suddenly noticing your presence. What may I help you with today? Did I hear correctly that your friend Maurice is looking for work? Yes, I'm here to purchase some clothes for Fatima. Uh, if I say that, it might charge me more money than it's worth. And then I might not get my outfit. I don't know. Okay, so did I hear correctly that your oh. friend's looking for work? Ah, oh, yes, you heard correctly, madame. I'm terrible by trade. If you're looking to employ me, I can update your outfits to restore some of their novelty and alter their sensibilities when in whatever direction you desire. Ooh. I might also be able to help you negotiate a decent discount as a certain provider of elegant mm -hmm. finery. He he might be right, Fatima sides. My services cost approximately 40 lira per week. Does that feel acceptable? Um. Hmm. I'm going to go bankrupt. Do I have to pay it now? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to say it sounds mm. right. Uh, yes, I assumed it would be so. Wait, what? You actually want to hire me? He gasped. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, bonne madame. I promise that you'll be the most elegantly styled woman in all of Paris. Your radiant shuggle, like a burning sun, and those that dare to approach your majesty shall be destroyed for their hubris, like the wax wings of Icarus. Personally, you always felt quite sympathetic to Icarus. What's the point of wings if, if not to always reach uh, ever higher? Of course, this doesn't feel like the right time to bring that up. You have hired Maurice the tailor. So my good friend Fatima, get, uh, about wait. So my good friend Fatima, about getting my wonderful employer a discount. <sighs> oh, fine, let's talk business. Yes, I get a discount. Okay, so I need something for the church. Oh no, it's a hundred. Wait a minute, don't I own that? Oh wait, no, it's not a hundred. It's eighty-two. But I already own that one, don't I? Yeah, I own that. Hmm. 
that's what does it, but then I'll just save my money because I already have this one. And the novelty's not worn out yet, so I'll just go ahead and leave. Okay, so March 26, 1789. Okay, so it's the day of the party, and we're going to re receive church gossip. Okay, go to the party. Ah, crap, I'm exhausted. I'm going to lose credibility, no. Or is that what I'm going to lose by the end of it? Ugh, I don't know. Okay, so as your carriage nears the party, you consider taking one last moment to assess your preparations. Okay, so accept, assess. You pause to consider how well rested you are. Unfortunately, you can feel the exhaustion set in as soon as you look past the door towards the enormous crowd of party guests. Tonight is going to be a long night. Yikes. Exhaustion has been given your credibility penalty. You check a tiny mirror you keep in the carriage to see that you're wearing your humble caraco and skirt to being a uh, party being helped by the church. The guests have no strong feelings on your outfit, and credibility has not changed much. With preparations like this, results of the night could be a toss-up. You step out of your carriage and hear the ripple of whispers that signal your arrival to any social event these days. There's a small line in the entryway of the cathedral as guests are waiting to get in. While you are standing in line, you manage to overhear an interesting rumor. You make a mental note of it just in case. You've gained a piece of cheap church gossip. Huh. A servant checks your invitation and everything seems to be in order. Now, during into the party, please take this gift of wine along with my compliments to our host. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. She gratefully takes the gift for you and sets it aside. As you enter the party, you can hear the whispers of other guests noting your generosity. I am quite generous, that's right, yes. You stare at me, all the attention on me, and that's great. Okay, so I spent 10 lirva, you gained a tiny amount of credibility, and you lost a tiny amount of peril. Which I didn't have any peril, peril so... Now, let the games begin. Oh my gosh, I only get two turns and there's so many people. Okay, so uh, it appears that the party's host has left their study unlocked. This might be a valuable opportunity for someone of more unscrupulous nature. Oh, I'm not gonna... I'm not stealing from a church. God, that's horrible. Okay, you find yourself speaking with a woman who could tell you of some gossip concerning the church. All you have to do is deflect the tiresome beloveling of a particularly boastful church patron. You come across a woman interviewing a man for the sake of her book, but something doesn't seem quite right about the man's outrageous claims. Not much credibility in that. A jilted gentleman has sought at your company, and he has quite the grudge to settle. However firmly held, grudges often lead to loose tongues. Oh, but yeah, that doesn't get me any... This could get me five credibility. And bourgeoisie gossip. But I could lose 20, which I don't have 20. But all the rest either gets me zero or gets me negative. So let's, uh, let's try this one. You step back in the vestibule for a moment so you can collect your thoughts and get the first opportunity to speak with any new arrivals to the party. It's then that you see two individuals speaking together in the corner. The fact that they're trying to stay from everyone else only increases your interest in their conversation. You recognize neither this bespeckled woman, not the nor the extravagantly dressed gentleman that she's speaking with. However, judging from the fact that she pauses to write whatever he speaks, you can surmise that she's interviewing him. It becomes apparent via your spine that these people are Nikkei uh, Ikovor, a foreign author looking for inspiration for her latest novel, as well as Gelum de Sebel, a self-styled libertine philosopher. And in a palation that doesn't seem to require much in the way of academic credentials. Huh. You described yourself earlier as a patron of the arts. What is your relationship with theater? Have you sponsored any performances? Ooh. I am no mere tight-fisted patron, good madam. I am an inspiration, a muse, if you will. In fact, when, um, oh my gosh, these words. Bale Marcus wrote The Barber of Seville. I was his inspiration for Count Alma Viva. The, dre the sharply dressed man proudly replies between long gulps of wine. From what you remember of that play, that's not something to be particularly proud of. It also doesn't sound even vaguely true. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this will be fantastic for my book, Monsieur. I must ask, how did you and uh, Monsieur Baramakas meet? Uh, well, we met at a banquet held by a visiting Algonquin prince. <sighs> I'm sorry, did you say an Algonquin prince? He came across the ocean from the Americas and then held a banquet. The author replies far more suspicious of this particular claim. Gamir glances to you and raises an eyebrow. He knows his game is up. I know it sounds outrageous, but he's serious about the banquet. I myself was there. Madame Ekolov, it sounds unlikely because it never happened. This is just fable. Not only was I there with him, so was my tailor, Maurice, who can attest to the splendor of the evening. The choice to solve the problem via your fashionable tailor. Medium credibility. What's considered medium? Let's try my tailor and see if it works. Barely concealing a smile, Monsieur de Stable steps back to admit Maurice into the circle of the conversation. Hmm. My tailor follows me to the party? Oh, I'm really fancy. Maurice steps in, the wheels of his vivid imagination already turning. Ah, yes. But of course, it was a fine evening of visual delight. I had loyally followed Madame de Clos to this festival, as I festivities as I was searching for a satorial inspiration among the Algonquins' uh, unique configurations of paints, buckskins, and expert beadwork. <laughs> Maurice then launches into a lengthy soliloquy, considering the entire and beauty of those natives to the Northern Americans. It's so effusive and detailed that even you start to forget that none of this ever happened. Madame Evoco is paying rapt attention to your tailor, writing so ferociously or furiously, that you're afraid that her notes might burst into flames. After your collective font of outrageous lies finally runs dry, Nikia leaves, satisfied with her research, and Maurice returns to whatever was preoccupying mm. your earlier. Merci beaucoup for your assistance, Yvette. I couldn't possibly have done this without your help. This also means that you have some decent gossip, given... Uh, this also means that you have some decent gossip, given that you just caught a prominent figure in the bourgeoisie flam uh, flagrantly lying about his accomplishments. However, Gilomi doesn't necessarily need to know that. You gain a piece of cheap bourgeois gossip. Well, I'm off to seek other entertainments. Au revoir, madame, he says with an overlay elaborate bow. With that, he leaves, and you decide to examine the rest of the party. Perhaps you'll find another opportunity out there amongst the crowds. I got cheese gossip. Okay, so why is there a woman here who looks so much like you? Okay, that's the guy from earlier. Print your spell speaking with a woman. Okay, so that was earlier as well. Okay, this one's... I'm really curious about. While circling the party, you happen to notice something very strange. At first, you thought you had been looking in the mirror, but something was simply off about the whole thing. How odd. You walk over to inspect said mirror, but you're interrupted by someone in the middle of your approach. Ah, Madame de Croix, I'm pleased to see you again. Would you be willing to indulge me for a moment, so we might be able to discuss our business again? You remember everything we went over, no? You have no idea who this devil is. Ah, but of course, the business that we did, which I know so much about. Monsieur, I have no idea who you are. I'm sorry, can you remind me of the business again? Easy. Okay, so let's try this one. Uh. He paused to examine you for a moment, which makes sense. That lie could have been a little more confident. Oh I'm glad to hear that you have everything in order. So many of my clients usually decide to barrage me with careless questions. You've gained a little credibility. As I was saying, your appro you approached me earlier in the evening and said that you were interested in borrowing a substantial amount of money. Of course, the interest rates will be significant, but you've already convinced me that this isn't worth worrying about. He steps back and looks you up and down, puzzled by something. If I may say so, uh, be so bold, why did you change your outfit? Better yet, uh, better yet, what do you think of it? Monsieur, I can assure you that I haven't changed my clothes. Oh, uh, well, why don't I allow my tailor Maurice to explain that? Hey, you know what? Oh. Come on, Maurice. Oh, it's quite simple, you see. Maurice begins as he joins at your <laughs> side. Madame de Croix has taken to changing outfits at key points of the night and keeping with the latest trends from the wealthy free women in my home of St. Domingo. It, imp it marks important turning points in the evening with the same visual splendor as a lighthouse seen from a great distance after many days at sea. Believe me, it will be all the rage soon enough. <sighs> oh, I didn't realize you were so ahead of the times, the banker replies, having clearly found himself in uncertain territory and looking to drop his original question as soon as possible. You've gained some credibility. He talks with you a while longer, and it appears that he already intends to loan you a large sum of money, a sum so large that you couldn't possibly pay back. You try to dismiss the thought, but he's turned out to be quite insistent, which makes sense, as anyone loaning money with a high interest rate is secretly hoping that you'll never be able to fully pay them back. Why else would they do it? 
Talking with him a bit longer, you manage to both excuse yourself and convince him that you need more time to think on the positively, on this positively life-ruining decision. However, your first real priority is finding the mysterious woman who's pretending to be you. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so I got some cheap church gossip, which says a country priest in Paris from the Eastern General has been granting asylum to accused criminals. He is inventing, um, intervening on behalf of the people or obstructing justice. For the cheap bourgeois gossip, some representatives from the Third Estate have gotten free rooms to stay in from the prominent hotelier. However, they're staying for a long time. Is this a sign of friendship or of the I can't representatives taking advantage of their host. Okay. Okay, so March 27, 1789. Okay. All right, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and end it there. Um we just did the church party and you know when I come back and play again, we'll be going to the wine tasting. Uh, so that'll be, you know, interesting to see how that goes. We didn't really meet any of the, like, more prominent characters in the game for the church one. I was kind of surprised because I know that there's a priest that you can talk to. Um, guess he wasn't there. So I really hope you're enjoying Ambitions. Please leave me a like, leave me a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you next time. Bye!